Have you ever been in that state in life? If that money does not show up by this time, you have lost that contract. If you don't get that paper by this time, you know that that document you are processing is not going anywhere. So then the question is, what do you do at that time when you don't know what to do? It's that like no man can help you, nobody can help you. It's something here I want to say. But here what the scripture says. It said David was greatly distressed as number six, for the people spoke of stoning him because the soul of all the people was grieved, every man for his son and for his daughter. And David, my mother, I want to see that word. And David did what? He encouraged himself in the Lord his God. Hmm. Somebody hear what I'm saying? When you don't know what to do, there is only one thing you can do when you don't know what to do. And that is to encourage yourself in God. And like the man of God said, there is only one thing that will only come to your mind that can give you victory. You need to remember what God has done in the past. Because if you can recount your miracle, how God delivered you when the enemy tried to kill you last year. If God delivered you last year, you can remember the faithfulness of God and say that God that delivered me last year, that same God will deliver me this year. Look up this problem. Is somebody hear the word of prayer? It was the same thing David said when Saul asked him. How can you go? I mean, but the same thing David said, well, sir, how can you go against Goliath? For you are just a snowball. I am a man of war who has fought war from my youth. You can't fight. But David looked at Saul and listened to me. When I took care of the sheep of my father, the lion and the bear came, but the Lord gave me the lion and the bear. That same God will also give me the head of this Goliath. Somebody hear what I'm saying? Yes, Some of you here, I'm speaking to you tonight by the word of the Lord. Whatever the devil has stolen from your life, I want you to encourage yourself in God because God is about to give you double for your trouble. God is about to give you double for your trouble. Everything the devil has stolen from you. God is about to bring it back. Your job, God will bring it back. Your peace, God will bring it back. Your money, God will bring it back. Your lost time, God will bring it back. I don't care who have gone ahead of you, but I know something. God is able to give you what you have lost in 10 years, just in one day or in one night. You hear what I'm saying? Yes, sir. There is an anointing that God is going to release upon your life that will accelerate you. Amen. Bring you into your next level. Oh, Amen. Amen. That is why when I came to this church, I said, man of God, I said to you, I said to those, those who are here to be with them, everyone that has been lost, God will bring double of everything that has been lost. One pray that God, if 100 have been here before, we are not praying for 100 to come back. 200 is coming back. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Yes, sir. But listen, let me say this. While, while, while I, listen, this thing will only come by faith if you can believe. Because when you read the book of First Kings chapter number 7, the Bible said there was a famine, there was a famine in the land. Because the enemy has already besieged, I mean, besieged the city that nothing was coming in and nothing was going out. The children of Israel were besieged by the enemy. Is it not the Samaria, whatever it is? That it was so difficult that by the Bible said there was scarcely no food to eat. So hard that two women came together and said, We will die. Because there is no food. I want to see how difficult it is. And these two women I said within themselves, listen to me. You have a son. I have a son. 
Let us cook my son and eat him today. I want to see. I want to see the Bible. This thing did not happen now. I mean, we're talking of what has happened. That is to tell you how difficult life has become. That even a mother that has carried a child for nine months could stand with another one. Say, let us cook my child and eat him today. And tomorrow, we will cook your child and eat your child so that we will eat. And the two women said, okay, let us go. And the said, the first woman killed her child and they ate it together. And when the next day came, this woman who had cooked her child told the other one, now bring your child so that we will cook your child and eat. The Bible said the woman hid her child but did not bring her child. But yet she has eaten the other woman's child. Of their confusion, their quarreling. The Bible said, Behold, the king was walking on the wall and saw them and said, What a lady, what is the problem? And when they told the king the story, the king said, In my kingdom, my God. My God. the king said, The cause of this problem is the man of God Elijah. For by this time tomorrow, the head of Elijah will not be in the story. Send a message to him. But God was already speaking to Elijah while he was sitting with the elders. And Elijah said, Behold, the king seek my head. Why the Elijah was so stand up to run? He said, Listen to me. If anybody comes, tell him I am done. But while he was just saying, Behold, the messenger that was sent from Ahab, I mean from Ahab was already on the door knocking. And Elijah said to the elder, it's not the feet of his master behind him. Which the Ahab was coming. And at that time, the Bible said, Behold, his master came. But guess what? By the Spirit of the Lord, I want to get this one. By the Spirit of the Lord, Elijah stood and prophesied. And said, By this time tomorrow. Somebody hear what word? Elijah said, By what? This time tomorrow, he said, there shall be abundance in the land that everybody will have more than enough to eat. Thank you, Jesus. The Bible said, because of the condition of the land, even the man who is the accountant that takes care of the treasury, when he heard that word, he looked at the last and shook his head. He said, even if God will open the windows of heaven and pour out everything, he said, it is not possible. And Elisha look at the man. He said, because you do not believe my God. the word of the Lord. He said, with your eyes shall you see it, but you will not eat, neither shall you partake of it. Somebody hear the word of God. Now there was fun and dryness, but I want you to understand that God took four leper, people who were lepros, who were already condemned and rejected. God used four men, rejected men, to turn the condition of the land around. That the Bible said, these four men sat down and said, why do we sit here and die? He said, if we stay here, there is no food, we will die. If we go into the land where the children of Easter is, there is no food where we die. There is only one place where there is food. It is in the camp of our enemy. Let us go to the camp of our enemies. There is two things that will happen to us. One, they may have mercy on us and give us food to eat. Or two, they will kill us. So whatever the case, whether we're there here, we will die. Whether we go there, we will die. Whether we go here, we will die. But let's go where there is food. And the Bible says, four men who could not walk, crippled men, began to come into a city. The Bible says, as they were coming into the town, God put the microphone on the legs of four men, and the enemy began to hear sound like a mighty army of horses coming. And the Bible says, the whole camp of the enemy ran and left everything, says, for oh, God has come against us. Then the Bible said, some of them were even cooking food on the fire. It was about to be ready for eating. The Bible said they ran to their chicken around. The Bible said when the four men came, behold, the whole city was empty. They said, what is happening? 
The Bible said they went into one tent. The whole food was on the fire. It was already ready by the time they got there. The Bible said they sat down and eat. Went into another one, saw food. The Bible said they ate some, saw good. And said to them, and then I thought it was too much. And so they let us go and call the children of Israel. The Bible said in one day the children of Israel came and had in abundance more than they could ever think of. And that man who said, if God opened the windows of heaven, it is not possible. The Bible said he saw so much abundance that while he was at the gate trying to prevent the people, the Bible said the people had run him and marched him to death with his eyes. He saw the provision of God but never tasted or never ate a while because of his own belief. There is only one thing that can stop the miracle of God for your life. It is your own belief. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Hear me. God will not stop you because the will of God is to give you that desire. Can I say this? Even the devil cannot stop you. There is only one person that can stop you and that is you. The devil can't stop you. It's only you that can stop yourself from experiencing this promise of God if you doubt the word of the Lord. Because like I said, I said, there are some people who are just sitting and just watching. Pastor just said, we will see what will happen to you. Are you catching one of them? There are some people who are just sitting and watching. We will see what will happen of, of this church of God mission that, that is here because everybody is gone. There are some people who are waiting. They are ready to laugh and to mock at you. But I come to prophesy that the word of the Lord, that everything you have lost, that has been taken captive by the enemy, God is about to restore them back to you and it is coming in double. Somebody hear what I'm saying? Some of you seated here have experienced joy in the past. But God said to the prophet, do you see the former house? He said, for the present house shall be greater than that of the former. Because God is going to bring down his glory. That those who left will begin to regret what it will be in the first place. You hear what I'm saying? Yes, sir. That's why I come. My mandate here is to strengthen your faith in God. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Yes, sir. And I said, be at peace, for God is at work. Yes, the reality of the matter is that you may not understand and you will never understand how God works. God doesn't work in the way you think or expect him to work, but God works in a mysterious way. God can use nothing and produce something out of that thing. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Yes, Even your wilderness experience, you say, God said, I will turn it around and cause your wilderness to blossom and for rivers of water to begin to flow in the wilderness. But I come to you by the word of the Lord tonight to prophesy. The Bible says, verse number six, I want to get this, verse number six, David encouraged himself in the Lord. And David said unto Abiathar, the priest, Abimelech's son. He said, I pray they bring me hither the effort and I better or the effort to David. That's number eight. And David inquired at the law. Somebody said David inquired at the law. He said to me, people of God, when you don't know what to do, there is only one thing you need to do. You need to inquire from God. Lord, what do I do? Somebody here wants to you will definitely come in that state like no matter how I prophesy to you, listen to me. Your dark nights will always come. But you must understand that darker the night, the closer the dawn. Mm -hmm. Is somebody here want to say? When the night is more darker, know that the dawn is closer. For the scripture says, weeping may endure for a night. It says, but joy comes in the morning. Some of you are going through your night season, but hold on, the morning is coming. Amen. Somebody hear what I'm saying? Your morning is coming. When your morning comes, you will have a song in your mouth. Is somebody hear what I'm saying? Forget me. You say, I have not given my testimony yet. 
Don't worry, your tongue will come, you will give your testimony. Your testimony will even be bigger and even be better than those who have given their testimony. While we are doing, while we are growing up at home, we always have this thing in mind that always say, he that laughs last, laugh best. Somebody hear what I'm saying? Your miracle, I don't care who have gone ahead of you, but I want you to know that you are next in line for your miracle. Yeah. Hallelujah. Nothing will steal your joy. Nothing will steal your joy. And nothing will kill you in your night season. You will surely see your morning and be able to rejoice in the joy that God is going to bring to you. Hallelujah. Amen. The Bible said David inquired of the Lord. I don't want you to forget. I don't want you to forget this. God will always give you direction for your recovery when you learn to inquire from Him. I want to get that. God will always give you direction for your recovery when you learn to inquire from God. Lord, what do I do? Listen to me. I don't know if I've shared this testimony here before. Let me, let me say this. In 2000, no, 19, 1999 going into 2000, was well, the first time I traveled to South Africa then. I went on my first trip. It was easy for me to get the visa. I met a brother who was wealthy. He has money in Nigeria. His brother was the number three in government. After the president, the vice president turned, his, brother, his elder brother was the vice president, the air vice marshal of Nigeria. With all the robbery then during the military regime, his brother had stolen a lot of money from the nation, but never stole it in his name, but always in his brother's name. So that when they are poor, they will never be able to trace it. It was in his brother's name. But now, the man is out of government, his brother taking the money, but at least the brother has now become a pastor along the line. So he had some wealth, a lot of money that has come to him through that, through those business and everything. The man was rich. But the man could not travel out of Nigeria, went to the U.S. Embassy with millions of dollars in his account. When he got to America, I said, no, we won't give you this. I invest your money in Nigeria. So the guy was so frustrated. I mean, man, he has money. He can go anywhere in the world, have land, have property and everything. But he could not get this until we met him. I was preaching the meeting in that city in Omeo. And he took us out of the aid and everything. After talking to Lucas, I said, if you can get me visa for any country in the world, he said, I will pay your ticket and I'll pay my ticket for us to go. I said, you, you will do what? You will pay my ticket. No problem. I said, I have contacts all over the world. Then I had somebody, one white guy in Australia here. I had this South Africa. I said, don't worry. I'm going to bring this country. I have it in Malaysia. My brother. That was how I went on the internet. Send message. I wrote to all these I said, listen to me. I want to come to your country to your conference. I don't want you to pay any. I will pay my whole bill. I will pay all my expenses. All I ask is just send an invitation letter. All of them were surprised that an African man wants to come pay all of them. I said, yeah, we will pay all the bill. Even if there's more, we will give to you. And the whole invitation came from Australia. The invitation came from Malaysia. Came from South Africa. I took the man's passport. Went to South African Embassy. When I got to South African Embassy, the consular was angry, the visa officer was angry with some guys who came in. I don't know what was happening. was angry and threw that out. I mean, you know, saw that out. The next person that was coming was me. I thought that was how the consular always behaved. I mean, half in the Nigerian. The moment I got there with that squeeze face and everything, the woman took my application. The moment they opened my application, I saw that it was a church. It was a Christian. She calmed down. She took everything, she saw everything that was there and wrote the receipt with a smile. She gave me the receipt, said, come and collect your visa. This was on Monday. He said, come and collect your visa on Wednesday. That was the statement she used. So I, I left there. I was wondering, why is this woman so mad? It was later on I discovered that the woman was a deaconess in Four Square Gospel Church. So when she saw that this was the pastor, I mean, she calmed down and said, come, come. The moment I collected this, I told the other guy, I took his passport, never got to the embassy. I went to the embassy myself, dropped his passport without the guy appearing. The woman took it also, write everything. He said, come and collect your visa on Monday. Collect, collect. When the guy saw the visa out, he took me straight to South African Airways. Paid for my ticket, paid for his ticket. We came to South Africa six days job. 
just came, everything was paid. I was just enjoying free 